Can the NVIDIA RTX 4070 really do 1440p on Ultra with like all the graphics settings maxed out? Is it a 1440p GPU? At $599 and it has been on sale lately, this is definitely a GPU that a lot of people look to buy. Is this something that's great? Or should you be looking towards maybe the AMD 7800 XT or something like that? Well, the best way to do it, let's play through some of the more popular new games that are very demanding um, on the 4070. This is going to be a system with a 7800X3D, so no issues about CPU bottlenecks. Let's go to 1440p, high graphic settings, ray tracing. Let's see how it does. The first game is going to be Alan Wake 2. This is one of the most demanding games, and I've been testing it on, on different GPUs use a lot so we're gonna go now here into the options so the graphics we're gonna put it at 2560 by 1440 the 1440p we're gonna let it render natively first let's see how it does natively now frame generation is gonna be off and as we take a look here everything's gonna be on ultra or high basically maxed out including ray tracing and path tracing which really tax the GPU so then if we go into the game here and now let's hear a word from our sponsor, vip-cdkdeals.com, a Windows 10 Pro CD key. Add to cart, you put in code CC20. This will also work on Windows 11. You wanna go into your settings in Windows, change and adjust your CD key, click activate. And now let's go back to the video. And you can see on the, on the top left, you're gonna have the frames per second. You can see we're doing about 31 frames per second or so natively. Now, this isn't anything against the 4070. Even the 4090 at 4K does really low natively without DLSS or frame generation. And even, you know, at 1440p, obviously the 4090 gets a lot more FPS, over 60, but this game is very demanding. So obviously you don't really want to play around 31, 32 FPS. I guess you could do it. It's not the fastest game, but you can tell it's not really the smoothest thing. So what does that mean? So we have to go into options. Let's just do frame generation and see what that does. We're going to keep it native. We're going to keep it at 25 uh, uh, by 60 by 1440 DLAA. And let's see. Now it goes up close to 60 FPS. So it's still native, but we have frame generation, which is using AI to interpolate frames. Um, and that way it just gives you a higher, you know, sort of a you know, refresh rate here. Higher frames per second, that is. Um, this uh, monitor is a 27-inch OLED um, Asus monitor. It's going to be the 240 hertz, so it can definitely handle high refresh rates. So definitely feel smoother, and we're getting around 56 FPS average. If you move around fast, you do see a little bit of fraying, a little like fizz, if you will, like a little bit of like a weird thing. That's probably with the game and DLSS and some combination, but obviously you're not going to be whizzing around that fast typically anyway. So as we move around, we're just a little bit under 60, and overall game still looks pretty good, looks pretty sharp. Now, this game, you probably want to drop the render resolution to quality. That's going to be basically 1707 by 960, and then obviously it's going to use DLSS to upscale it and to look a little bit better. Then we get around 83, 84 FPS, and it does feel smoother. So overall, that's significantly better, especially in these particular scenes. I would probably want to run it, um, you know, with DLSS, with frame generation, and then set it to quality. You can do DLAA, that kind of keeps it around uh, 60 FPS, but this one you have a little more leeway. Let's say if you get into a scene where it's gonna drop the FPS more, this will give you a little bit more room to work with. Now, with a, 4070 on Alan Wake 2, I would say this is definitely a, a very good 1440p GPU. Obviously, you can do better with the 40, 4070 Ti, 4080, 4090, obviously, but this is going to be really good and not too much, you know, not too far away from what AMD can do because remember, AMD 7900 XTX is going to get crushed with ray tracing and path tracing. So, if this particular game is when you're playing, at 1440p, the 4070, turning on NVIDIA's little magic tricks with DLSS, which this game is kind of designed around anyway. Even the 4090 kind of needs it at 4K, and even 1440p, it benefits from it. So it's nothing against the 4070. Um, overall, I'd say that's pretty decent. So let's try some other games and see how it stacks up. 
So now let's try Resident Evil 4. This is up for game of the year, and it's a fantastic looking game. And it has a lot of stuff to tax the GPU. So uh, we're going to take a look here under graphics. We're going to put it once again at 1440p with the refresh rate being high. Uh, let's use the preset max. That's going to give us ray tracing, and it's going to give us a little warning on the side here. It's going to say, you know, 13.92 gigabytes of the 10.99 gigabytes of the graphics memory are going to be used. So we're kind of like way over that. But we're going to put it on max because the point of this video is to see maxed out the limit of the 4070. That way you would know, oh, maybe you need a 4080 if you want to be playing this game at 1440p. I don't know. Let's, let's take a look. So everything's going to be basically preset on max. And then we're going to go and... Start up the game, walk around, and see how the frames per second does without any type of upscaling. Remember, that's always the what we can do after. So far, getting pretty high FPS. I mean, right at the beginning, it's 100 FPS. And if we check the options again, you'll see that its preset is on max, and there's no upscaling. The rendering mode is normal. No upscaling going on here. So in this particular game, I would say 1440p this is pretty much amazing. I mean... You don't need much more than 100 FPS in this game. It's way above 60, meaning that in a lot of scenes, if it drops, it's not going to drop probably lower than 60. Um, so that's uh, certainly pretty respectable for this particular game. Now it's hovering around, you know, it goes from like 94 to 101. Um, it'll depend on exactly what's going on with the, you know, with the, with the scene and the game itself. And you see here, even as that, you know, there's some action here. No, even if you run around, I'm just going to sort of avoid all the, the bad guys just to get to the scene where when you're past the gate, uh, there's a lot of uh, motion. That's usually when the frames per second drop a considerable amount. You can see the VRAM allocation is uh, around 11 gigabytes and it's using maybe nine. Um, so we're still okay. I mean, the 4070 does have 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which isn't perfect. It's not 16 or, you know, 20 or 24, but it's better than 8. So that's definitely um, a good point towards this particular GPU. So you can see the game looks really, really good. And everything seems to be, you know, pretty much in check. Now, this scene will usually drop the FPS a decent amount because there's a lot going on. There's the fire. There's different people. We're just going to run around. And you see it does kind of drop it to maybe, you know, in the 80s. It's still in the 90s, 80s when there's a lot of people on the scene. But it still even really hasn't gone under 80. Um, definitely way above 60. So this is something you could play 100% 1440p and you don't need upscaling or anything. So that's a pretty fantastic result. I'd be pretty happy with this with a 4070 at 1440p. So now let's try another game. It's not a ray tracing game like the other ones, but it is the unpopular newest Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. How will the 4070 do at 1440p on a game that you want the highest frames possible? And remember, this game now does have DLSS 3. So if you're going to turn that on or not, low reflex, I don't know. It's if you're a professional, you're probably you know professional like FPS player. You probably want to leave the LSS3 off, even with uh, you know reflex and things like that. It doesn't make sense on a game like this. But if you're playing like the campaign mode or something like that, um, you could probably get away with it being the LSS on if you really do want more frames. Because then I guess it's a little bit of a balance. It's not going to be if you miss something as if you're playing in the competition online. But definitely in an FPS game. I'd want to see this game run natively really well. That's, uh, you know, the LSS3 is just like a side mark here. It's fine in games like Ratchet and Clank, where it's one player and it's more visually impressive. But this game, you want to be fast with the reactions. And obviously, frame generation adds latency, even with NVIDIA Reflex. So it's definitely something you want to keep in mind. And then we're going to make sure it's on extreme, the highest setting possible. No dynamic resolution, no upscaling. And let's see basically what we're getting. So if we see up on the left there, you know, we're getting well over 100 FPS, 117 on average. So that's definitely not bad. Obviously, if it's a 240 hertz monitor, you'd want to go up. But then maybe you can lower your graphics settings a little bit. In this game, I would certainly do that before having any type of DLSS. But you can see getting average now, 138 FPS. I'm sure in some scenes it may drop closer to like 100. But this is without 
upscaling. So that's definitely a game that you can play without any upscaling or anything like that. I guess if you did turn on uh, DLSS with frame generation, and then let's say you go on quality, I'm sure you're going to get a pretty nice bump up in the frames per second. All right, guys, so that's how a 4070 does with some ray tracing games at 1440p. What do you think? You think using the LSS is a problem or not? It does well in most cases, but with many new games, you seem to need upscaling. But overall, it's a very good experience at 1440p. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and we'll see you guys on the next video.